For this quick and easy bookmark, you need to have three pieces of fabric, each measure four inches by four inches, so they're perfect squares. And so I've chosen sort of more solid and then two print ones. And then I'm about to apply interfacing and each of your squares need interfacing. So I have three pieces of interfacing cut as well. If you've never used interfacing, I have bought fusible interfacing. So one side has bumps and one side is smooth. The bump side is the glue. So you're gonna wanna make sure you have no wrinkles in your square first, because if you press interfacing onto wrinkly fabric, it will stay wrinkled. So I put my bad side up. My bumps will go down against my bad side. And then we're gonna press it for 10 seconds in the same spot. So using a press cloth, if you don't have a press cloth at home, just a thin piece of cotton or a tea towel, just prevents heat from bubbling the interfacing. And on a cotton setting, I'm holding it in one spot, 10 seconds. And then moving it to another spot, 10 seconds. And I'll just get my last corner on the other side. And as soon as that's done and you have sort of, I, I always work middle out to prevent bubbles as well. And then you'll see here that it's fused to the fabric itself, gives it a little more structure. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that to the, my other two squares. So now that you've fused interfacing on each of your squares, you're gonna take the one that you're gonna embroider. So mine's my more solid one, and you're gonna fold it in half so it forms a triangle now. Okay, and you can just give it a really nice crease. And this is the one that will become your corner of your bookmark. So if you can kind of visualize this, this is what it will look like when it's done. So you wanna pick the one you want for your letter, or if you wanna leave it plain, either way, it's gonna be your corner piece. So go ahead and iron that with a nice sharp crease in half. After pressing your corner, you will wanna to start to make your sort of letter if that's what you choose to do. Um, I use a friction pen um, as they disappear with heat um, and to mark where I'm going to sort of do my applique stitch. Um, just keep in mind that we have a half inch seam allowance on both of these raw edges. So I kind of like marked out just as a guide so I could see my letter placement because you don't want it too close to the top or when we actually sew it to the square, you're going to sort of sew on top of your nice letter. So mark a letter in sort of the middle area. After you've done that, um, I'm gonna show you some settings on your sewing machine. So over at your machine, I have set our stitch to uh, seven, which is our standard zigzag stitch. So that's right here. I've decreased the width to a 3.5, and I've also decreased the stitch length to 0.5. This will make it go closer together, um, so it sort of fills it in really nicely for an applique stitch. The machine foot I'm using is sort of the embroidery machine foot that most sewing machines come with. It's your all clear sort of foot. I like this one over a darning foot, although if your machine came with one, a darning foot looks like this. Um, for beginners, I would stick with your embroidery foot. It's easier to control. Um, but this is definitely one option as well. You do have to take off your whole foot attachment to attach your darning foot though. So today, for my beginners out there that have this irregular foot, we're gonna use our clear embroidery foot. And so I'm gonna just click it on. I like this one because then I can see what's going on. It's wide enough for my zigzag. I've also purchased a metallic thread. As long as you get a good quality metallic thread, it should be pretty user friendly, although metallic threads are thinner and they do have the tendency to break. So if you buy sort of a cheap quality one, you will get frustrated as it will break while you sew. But you could use a standard thread color, like if you wanted to use a contrasting white or whatever. Okay, so when we're ready to sew, I like to still use some tearaway stabilizer. This is just really cheap. It's almost like paper-like, it just tears off the back. Um, if you don't have a tearaway stabilizer at home, you could use a piece of tissue paper. I feel like it just gives an extra support. I know we've interfaced our, our uh, square, and that's what also helps gives this piece a little structure. But because we're sewing so close together, 
some machines will in fact um, sort of bubble the applique or push your fabric into what's called the feed dogs and almost jam up. So this is just one more thing you could do to make things a little easier and prevent that from happening. So I just place it on wherever underneath because it's gonna rip off the back. I'm lining up my S or your letter right in the middle. Like my line is right in the middle of my foot here. And now I'm gonna start my applique stitch. So it's just going sort of over either side of my pen line and I'm just trying my best to go nice and slow, ever so slightly turning as I sew. And if you ever feel like you're getting too far off your line, let's say I felt like I needed to get back closer to my line, just make sure your needle is always down before lifting up your foot, but you can slightly lift your foot and turn your fabric. I wouldn't turn dramatically because you'd have a gap in your stitching, but if you just do tiny, tiny little turns, it'll help you keep yourself right back on your line if you're having troubles just spinning your fabric as you sew. And what it's doing is it's doing this lovely zigzag stitch really close together. And so this is a tighter part of my ass, so I'm gonna go ahead and do the little lift up and turn. My needle was down. Um, and you're gonna continue doing this throughout your whole letter. Okay, so go ahead and keep on doing your applique stitch and then we'll show you your next step. Okay, so I've completed my S. I just wanna have those little like ends to my letters. So I took it out, clipped my threads and I'm just gonna put it right back in just a little bit past where I started stitching. Um, so that you can just sort of finish off. I mean, this is just a personal preference. Um, and I'm just going to make sort of these little caps to my letters. And I'll show you in a second what this actually is. So you can decide if that's something you want to do as well. But they're just the little end points as I cut this to your letters here. And so I'm going to go ahead and do one as well right there. Okay, so there's my finished S. And now again with that tear weight stabilizer, you can just rip it off the back like this. Take out those little pieces in between. And that just gave your fabric a little additional support and structure uh, while you sew really close together. And then it doesn't ripple, like it's completely smooth here. It just gives a better desired result. So now we're gonna attach it to our squares. So you should have three pieces. There's my monogrammed S. I'm gonna put it right on top of one of my squares like this. And then I'm going to flip my other square and sandwich it on top. So essentially I have good sides together, right? I'm looking at no good side. They're all touching. Just make sure if you don't trust yourself of this like slipping down, you could always attach this one first and just follow your 10 line down this L so it holds it in place before you attach this piece. That is no problem whatsoever. I have clips and so I'm gonna start at this corner here and really line up my corner. And then I'm gonna take my other piece, like I said, and we're gonna sandwich it on top so it's good sides are touching. And I'm just gonna clip it into place here. You can pin it. I, I just love these clips though, they are easy. So then I'm gonna to go to this corner and make sure this little end hasn't slipped and place it right on top there and clip this corner into place. And now go down to this corner and do the last bit. So making sure it's right on top there. We sew with a half inch seam allowance. So on your throat plate, you'll see what's called um, a four eighths or a half inch seam guide. That's what we're gonna follow for this. Now on my bottom, so my corner piece is right in here. I'm gonna leave a two inch opening at the bottom where there's only two, sort of the two layers of fabric. So I'm gonna just sort of draw out, I don't know, a line here and about three fingers, you know, in depth and another line there. So there'll be no sewing in this area so we can flip this square. So I'm gonna start here pivot, go up, pivot, 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 and come across. And always start and end with a back stitch because as we kind of will flip this, we will pull on that opening 
start point. So I'll clip one more clip right at the bottom there. Okay, so going into my machine, I have a bit of a contrasting thread so that you can see it while I sew. But we are gonna follow this half inch seam guide, okay? So your normal seam allowance usually is 5 8 It's just one inside of there, okay? So I'm gonna start at one of my little ticks that I made myself at the half inch line. And I'm gonna take about three to five stitches forward and then three to five stitches back to reinforce the start. Okay, so there's my back stitch. I'm gonna to come to my end here. I'm gonna make sure my needle stays down so that I can pivot. So pivot means lift up your foot, spin it, and then again, it should follow the 4 8 guide on that side. If it doesn't, take you know, turn it back and take another stitch before pivoting. And now we're going to follow the 4 8 all the way around the other sides. Sometimes I find it easier if you're sewing for the first couple times here to use your hand wheel so that you don't go too far past your corner. Because then you can see, okay, I maybe can take one more stitch. I can bring it back and take that stitch with my hand wheel and then spin it. And then you get a perfect pivot without going too far or too fast past it. Okay, so anytime you have a corner and it's going to be turned outside, we wanna get in the habit of clipping across diagonally and we're leaving about 1 8 left behind, so not like right up to the stitching, but some space, and then again at like sort of a 45. That allows for your corners to be really pointy. If you don't do that, they'll never turn nice and sharp. You'll have a bunch of bulk fabric bunched into each of your corners. So we're gonna do that with all our corners here before turning it through the opening. Okay, and then I also recommend you just trimming your seam allowance to half um, I'll show you what that means as well. So once we've clipped all our corners nicely like this, we're just going to get rid of about half that seam allowance like this. It doesn't have to be perfect. No one's going to ever see that. I would leave the full seam allowance on the side you're, you left open just so it's easier for you to press in and we will be top stitching that. So I like this and now I'm going to go ahead and flip this through the opening. That's why we backstitch because we do kind of give it like a little pull as we sort of push this whole bit through. So as you're pulling this all in, don't be shy. Just kind of grab at that middle and pull it out. Okay, it won't look as pretty once it's turned because we haven't used a point turner or something in there to get our corners nice and sharp. So you work on sort of just pushing those corners out as best as you can. And then I'm gonna show you a fun little tool that makes your corners a little bit nicer. Okay, so once you have it semi-flipped, I mean, it doesn't look awesome yet, you wanna use a point turner. Now, you can get these at your local fabric store. Um, you could use like a pencil um, end as well. Avoid using like shears, because those definitely have a sharp edge where it can actually poke through a hole and so could this. So I'm going at this very gently into my corners and giving them sort of a gentle push. So it just makes them um, a bit nicer. It's easier to turn when there's not as much bulk in there, but I'm just sort of pushing them out as pointy as they will go on all four of those cornered edges. There we go. So once we have that, you are going to sort of finger press this raw edge, that's where we op have our opening, and turn in about that half inch again, because that's what we left, we didn't trim that edge, so that this side that we have open looks smooth. So I'm just going to turn in my little edge here. There we go. And now, with your iron on a cotton setting again, we are going to press, and I like to use steam to give it a really nice sharp edge, but I'm going to press all four 
of my edges here because we are going to top stitch all the way around. Okay, so now the bottom edge has an opening, but we are going to close it up in a second with a nice top stitch around the edge. Okay, for our final and last step, I am going to top stitch all the way around all four sides, closing up that opening. There is a 1 8 line on your machine. This is a really narrow top stitch. We want to get really close to the edge. I'm actually going to start in the middle of my square. I don't love starting at a corner. It's very hard to line up and end up perfect uh, meeting up with the stitching at a corner. So I'm going to line up right against my 1 8 line. I'm on a regular straight stitch like it is when you turn on your sewing machine. Okay, I'm not going to back stitch to start. I will do a little locking stitch um, when I join up with my stitching. So I'm just going to follow that 1 8 line now all the way around all four sides. Again, pivoting at my corner. I'm going to stop and just hand wheel really nice and close so I don't go over my fabric. I'm going to turn it, making sure that I'm again right against that 1 8 line. If it doesn't want to move at the start of your corner, you might have to give ever so slightly like a push with your fabric to get it going, but that's all. It's it's just because of the bulk that's in those corners. If your few dogs are grabbing your fabric enough yet. And getting close to my corner, so I'm gonna use my hand wheel so that I can get right to this edge, but not over it. And again, I'm gonna give it like a little push or assistance to just get it going again off that corner. Sometimes that just gets stalled just a touch. So we're going right to this edge. There we go, and down sort of our last side now. And so when I meet up with my stitching here, I'm going to overlap it by just a little bit. And now I have a locking stitch. You could do a little back stitch. It just shows a little chunkier of a top stitch, but I have this little button on my machine. Some of you might have it too. It looks like this little dot with a circle right there. That's your locking stitch. And when I hit that, and then I push my foot pedal again, it will do four stitches in the same spot and it locks that stitch. So it's a nicer alternative um, to do versus a back stitch. And I would recommend that when you do your applique as well so you don't get a chunky spot in your letter. So, so then when we pull it out, we have this beautifully top stitched um, bookmark and I'll show you how we use it. So there you go, a quick, easy project to use up fabric scraps, great way to use up cotton great little um, present for somebody special. If we were gonna mark my page, I would just simply slide it over my book like this. And it's a great little bookmark to mark where you last left off. So I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial on how to create a fabric bookmark. Please like and subscribe to my channel.